Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 19. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Excel 2010 Chapter 2, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're going to start on the sheet called DP for dot plot. Now here's a dot plot. We have calls for sales rep 2, and here's the raw data. So this is a cell chart that looks like a histogram. It's got the height. Ah, but it's made up of little characters, asterisk, 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 asterisk. Now in the textbook they say, hey, this is just something you do on a piece of paper. But no problem, we can make this chart in Excel. Now, we're going to uh, have to make these categories just like we did before. In fact, when we did our quantitative um, frequency distribution in histograms before, we did this exact setup, but we did it vertically. So now we're going to do it horizontally. We're going to come up here. We already, I already did it for sales rep 2, and then here's sales rep 1. All right. So I want to create these categories, right? I put over here the start and the interval. So the start is going to be 10, enter. And then I have to say, hey, give me the one above plus our interval. And that has to be locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. Now, these are integers. So yes, the interval is 5 because ten, the, the, the lower limit and the upper limit are included. So I have a 5 here, so I'm going to subtract 1. Right? If that is the upper limit of the first class, then the lower limit of the second class is simply that plus 1. Right? Now we take this formula, which is always, hey, the lower limit plus the inter increment minus 1. We copy this over. And there are our classes. These two formulas we can now copy over. Now we create our label equals the lower limit, and we're going to join. We're building a text formula, so ampersand, shift 7. Any text has to go in double quotes. It's going to be a dash. So ampersand, double quote, dash, double quote, ampersand, and then the upper limit. Control Enter. So that was our formula there. Copy it over. Now, now the trick is, how do we how do we repeat dots like this? Well, first, let's just do our count if. Remember when we did our frequency distribution for quantitative data, we had two criteria. Uh, greater than or equal to 10, less than or equal to 14. Now, these are integers, so there's an equal sign on both criteria. So we have to ask the question of each individual number. Is this number greater than or equal to 10? And is it less than or equal to 14? All right, so the 23 would fall here, because 23 is greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to 24. So let's do our formula. Fools count ifs. So it's an S, because there's two. I'm going to click in that cell, Control shift down arrow, F4 to lock it, copy it. I'm copying it, Control c I need to type a comma. And the first criteria is, in double quotes, we have to put our comparative operator greater than or equal to n double quote. And then join it to our lower end, which is a relative cell reference. So as we copy it over, it will move. Now remember, the way to think of this is the greater than symbol is pointing towards the column of numbers. So anything in here has to be greater than or equal to whatever that is. There's our screen tip, comma, range 2. I'm going to control V because I already paste, I already copied it, comma, and criteria 2. Same thing, except for it's going to be less than or equal to the upper end. And that's a relative cell reference. So as we copy the formula, the two boxes will move. Control Enter. I have to show you how to all do that. I should have wiped it away. All right, but anyway, so we have uh, our count. Now, how are we going to convert the numbers to, to actual dots? Well, would you believe it? OK, so this thing right here is just delivering a number, right? But would you believe it? There's a function called repeat. 
and you just use the repeat function. You put the text in, which will say, hey, repeat function, take an asterisk, and then the repeat function will say, well, how many times do you want me to repeat it? Well, we already have that little thing that's going to say how many times to repeat it. So I'm going to come here. Remember, this is just a th uh, uh, delivers just a single number. It's a calculating formula, right? But now I'm going to do repeat, R-E-P-T. And it says, what text do you want to repeat? And uh, I'm going to put it in double quotes, asterisk, end double quote. There's the text, comma, and then the number of times. We already have it. So I come to the end. You know, sometimes when you're building a big formula, it's hanging way over. It's dangerous to click out here because you might click in a cell and ruin it. Sometimes it's easier to come up to the, the formula bar up here. Right? I'm going to close parentheses and then control enter. All right, so now we have our little dots, but now we need to do some formatting. So we can come up here. I'm going to center it. I'm going to open up the Format Cells dialog box, either right-click Format Cells or Control-1. Alignment is going to be first. Remember, we want them straight up and down. So I'm going to go like this. Font, I want font color. Right now it's black, right? I want it to be font color red. I want to increase the size to 14. So it's bigger. You can make it however big you want. And uh, I think that will do it. I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, now we have our dot plot. So you can clearly see for sales rep 1, much more spread out. Remember, these are uh, calls for a particular day. So 15 to 19 calls, there were two days. 20 to 24 calls, one day. 30 to 34 calls, one, two, three days. All right? And oftentimes, you'll see dot plots like this compared. Right? Same exact um, type of data for different people. Or you could, uh, in the book, I think they have for different hospitals or whatever it might be. You're comparing things. Here, you can clearly say all the data is um, concentrated in the, the lower number of calls. So from this person made from 10 to 29 calls, right? That's the range here. This person made from 15 all the way to 54 calls in one day. All right, so what if we wanted to print this? Let's look at what happened, because you can guess all this other stuff's going to be printed here. So I'm going to go either up to File and Print or Control-P. Now, print in 2010 is totally different than earlier versions. They actually, it's just a huge improvement. The print dialog box, page setup, and print preview are all together. In earlier versions, you hit Control P and it printed out 50 pages, and it was all wrong and you had to print it again, but now they've combined it. Well, this isn't what we want. What we'd like to do is just isolate just part of this. Now, when you close print, don't come up here and click this X, because that'll close the whole file. You click this right uh, here, or Escape. Now, there's a great feature called Set Print Area. So I'm going to highlight this little chart. I'm going to come up to Page Layout, Ribbon Tab, Set Print Area, or Print Area, Set Print Area. So now we have this little outline. Now let's go look at this. Control P. Uh, we need to do some page setup. So I'm going to come down here to the page setup link. I want it landscape and maybe 150%. Uh, so that increases the size on the print page. Margins, I want to do it horizontal. I'm going to click OK. All right, that's looking uh, very nice. One last thing, these numbers right here, I don't think I want those there, so I'm going to click Escape. And notice that this formula is looking there, and that formula is looking there. Now, these are called formula inputs. And actually, they're formulas themselves pointing to there. 
but it's no problem. If you cut and paste these, all of the formulas was, will update. So I'm going to cut using Control X, and I'm going to paste them down here, Control V. Now look at this. Is that not magic? That formula is pointing down there, and so is that. So cut and paste <coughs> with formula inputs absolutely work perfectly. Formulas will update. Now when we Control P, we can go ahead and click Print, and we have our dot plot, which we can compare. And sometimes you have you know, two or three or four dot plots that you're comparing. All right, I'm going to uh, save that, and we'll see you next video.